This question comes from last year's TMUA paper. We want to know that the infinite sum from n is 0 to infinity of sine of n pi plus pi over 3 divided by 2 to the n. Now, of course, this is a multiple choice problem, but I've hidden the options just to make it slightly more challenging. Let's dive in with the solution here. Let's just investigate what happens with small values of n. So when we plug in n is 0, we get sine of 0 pi plus pi over 3. That's sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2, divided by 2 to the 0. And I could simplify this, but I'm going to leave it like that for the time being. OK, what about when I get n is 1? Well, I'm going to get sine of pi plus pi over 3, which is sine of 4 pi over 3. And sine of 4 pi over 3, well, you can work it out in a, diff in a bunch of different ways, but that's going to be minus root 3 over 2 times 2 to the 1. I think the easiest way to see that is if I use a graph of sine, it looks something like this. This is pi. So 4 pi over 3 is just pi plus pi over 3, so somewhere there. And you can kind of see that that part of the curve there would be the same as the corresponding, like kind of that part there, when that bit's pi over 3. And we know that that's minus root 3 over 2. Um, that might not be super convincing. So another way you could convince yourself that sine of 4 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2 is using a cast diagram. Or you could just use um, your compound angle formula for sine if you know those. Anyway, that's what we get when n is 1. What about when n is 2? Well, we're going to get sine of 2 pi plus pi over 3. But 2 pi is when we're putting it inside a sign, basically has no effect because we're just adding two pi on, adding 360 degrees on. Because the period of sine is two pi, that means it's not gonna change it. So that's just gonna be sine of pi over three. So when n is two, the numerator is just sine of pi over three, which is root three over two, divided by, and then two squared. Similarly, when n is three, when we plug in uh, n is three, we get three pi, but three pi is essentially the same as one pi. And so we're gonna get minus root three over two on the top divided by 2 cubed, like so. And so we're adding up all of these terms here, put together, and they're all awfully similar. They're all got a root 3, they've all got a power of 2 on the bottom, and it kind of alternates plus minus, plus minus. This is just a geometric sum. Uh, let's find out what the common ratio is. Well, to get from here to here, we need to get a negative sign. So we have to multiply by minus 1, but we also have to put an extra 2 on the bottom. So we're multiplying by minus a half there. Similarly, uh, to get rid of the minus sign from here to here, we need to multiply by a negative number, so negative, and then also we've got 2 squared now on the bottom, so that's my, uh, times minus a half. So going from 2 to the 1 times 2 squared is times a negative half. Similarly, here to here is times negative half, and so on. That's our common ratio. So our first term, a, is root 3 over 2 divided by 2 to the 0, which is just root 3 over 2, and our ratio is negative a half. So this infinite sum here, we can just apply the infinite series formula for s infinity, which is a over 1 minus r. And this is going to be root 3 over 2 uh, divided by 1 minus negative a half, which is root 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2, which is root 3 over 3. And that there would be our final answer.